Oh, sit on the ball. Wait, let me see. It does work, okay. So this is my first time testing the Bluetooth on this. And by this, I mean the thing I'm reviewing, I mean the thing in the title that you might have seen, is a, it's a Rotel RC1570 preamp. See this, what the fuck's a preamp? You know, I think back to my channel and I'm wondering, have I ever actually done a dedicated just preamp? Because there's a lot of things that have them built in, but actually just being a pre let me explain. So this is a used unit, borrowed it from a viewer, got it on eBay or Craigslist or one of those places where you buy things that are not made anymore. And it's not like they don't make preamps anymore, it's just that this particular Rotel that was loaned to me is not made anymore. Um, Rotel is also my first Rotel thing. Rotel has been known to make a lot of audiophile components. A lot of people love old Rotel amps and things like that. Uh, but this is sort of like that five, six years ago stopped being made. So it's got like some modern features, but not a lot of modern features. And it's got DAC built in, but it's a good DAC. And what a, what a preamp does is before you amp, and I'm using the Marantz monoblocks feeding into the new Buchard, um S400 Mark IIs. That's what speakers are up there. Uh, before the amps and the speakers, before the amps, preamp. It's pre-amplifier. There's no such thing as a post-amp. Sure, someone out there in audiophilia world was like, you know what? We've got a preamp, we've got an amp, we need a post-amp. But preamp, what its job is to take multiple sources, whether it be just analog or just analog and digital, and then just let you switch between them and control the volume. That's it. That's its job. It's the whole fucking job. It's all its fucking job is. So when those power amps sit there just being like big dumb boxes that make loud sound go, what you need to do to control the volume coming out of the speakers is take the signal going through an RCA in the back and quiet the signal down. Just turn, Turn the volume down, turn it down, turn the volume down. And then switch to a different source, turn the volume up. Can I hit mute? There a mute? No, there's no mute. I don't think there's a mute button. There's a mute on the remote, but there's no mute here. So, this thing is very simple in what it can do. They're on eBay now for like $650 because it's a fucking Rotel and you're not going to pay less than that. But it kind of brings up the point that I want to talk about, which is why aren't there cheap shit preamps? Like shit, like the company shit, like the shit, like Magnus thing. Why don't they make one? Or Mayflower or JDS Labs or, well, Gashelli for that matter. Although Gashelli is just starting out, I think like two items I can still create because of the AKM factory burning. Um, but like, this is a very basic unit that would be very useful for a lot of people, especially audio files, especially ones that are not just working on a desk. Because this unit has, and I'm going to go over the front real quick. Keep stepping on that by accident. Power button, big old analog power button. A USB in the front with a dongle. That dongle is literally, when I go to USB, it says Bluetooth, and you hit volume up. Roger Rabbit, Eddie's theme here on the phone. This unit is at a point where Bluetooth wasn't standard, or maybe they thought they were gonna have a better Bluetooth dongle, so they made the actually pretty decent decision, although I would put it in the back, but the front has more reception range. Uh, you actually get a little USB dongle, you plug in there, and that's your Bluetooth receiver. And it says, it says it's a Rotel when you find it on your phone, and there you go, you're good to go. You put on Eddie's theme. It's not a very good Bluetooth, and I don't know if this is my phone, because my first time my phone has actually been used to Bluetooth audio out. I use, I've used my other phone a million years, but this one is sort of like, like stutter. It's not the best um, sounding thing. I don't know if this supports Aptex. I don't know if this supports fucking anything above SBC, because we are talking a slightly older unit. I'm not sure if any of these got upgraded, but that's their solution to Bluetooth. Kind of okay with it. If a modern unit comes out, the brand new 2021, and instead of having a Bluetooth thing built in, it just has a plug for a Bluetooth thing with a little antenna, because then you could take that out, 
throw it away, put in the new Aptex HD X2 or the fucking LL DAC fucking lossless one, and it'll just work fine. So that's actually pretty smart. There is an infrared receiver window here, and then there's a headphone out. I'm just going to get this out of the way because I sat down to listen to some headphones to see the quality of the headphone amplifier. Problem is, the headphones work when anything's playing. There's no mute the outputs and just listen to the headphone. It's just always on. So I put on the uh, the Grado SR80s with the Shippabo pads, which is phenomenal, by the way, and I hit play. And I hear the headphones just fine. Wow, they sound full and wide. Oh, 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 because the speakers are still playing. And since there's no, like, there's a mute button on the remote, which we'll get to the fucking remote because this thing's got problems. There's a mute button. The mute button mutes the outputs in the back. I got to show you the back so you basically understand this better. But it also mutes the headphone out. So, and there's nothing on it that's like mute just the outputs. This is just another constant output. So you'd have to actually go and physically shut off the amplifiers or unplug the things in the back to use just the headphone amp. I'm glad it's there. I wish it was a quarter inch. It's only a three and a half millimeter. Nothing changes when you plug it in. Like I was figuring it would be one of those like plug it in, it goes click, click headphone, and then nothing would play in the back and you unplug it and then the back would play again. Nope. All the time, everything, both of them. The screen is very 90s. Like, Rotel is one of those companies that they make good shit, sounds great, functions great. They probably haven't updated anything in their storeroom since 1996. That is the exact same. I mean, I I kind of love it. That's the thing. I'm, I'm old enough that I remember this. My mini disc player that my father brought home had that exact display that had those exact font that said volume in the exact same way. Exact. So I don't hate it. But when this was new, it was over a grand, I'm sure. So it's like, eh, it's 2012 or 15. Um, here are the inputs. All of these are input buttons. Every one of these has an input on the back. Phono, there's no phono. You know what? I'm not going to fucking look. Is there a fucking phono? Yeah, there is. There is. There's a ground terminal here, unless it's not. And this is separate, but that might be probably, probably as a phono preamp, not just a phono input. Because there's a button here, okay, phono, CD, XLR, which I am feeding it with the topping uh, D70S. We'll get to why in a second. Tuner, a lot of preamps have built-in tuners. You plug the antenna in and it just has AM, FM, because it's already here, might as well do that. This one does not. The owner of this actually gave me a digital tuner to test with. I'll... I have an antenna for it, but I may have to do it upstairs and not down the basement to get the full, you know, reception. Auxiliary, which is auxiliary. Optical, coaxial, USB, and PC USB. So that's USB, PC USB is in the back. This unit was more expensive than the regular Rotel RC15 whatever because it has digital inputs. Because uh, we got to turn to the back of it now. Do I have space? I probably don't actually. No, definitely, I definitely do not. Do not. So we're going to just walk around like peasants. Phono left and right, which are separate, which makes me believe it's an actual phono preamp and not just an accepting thing. Plus, there's a ground terminal here. RCA CD in, RCA tuner in, RCA auxiliary one in, RCA auxiliary two in, which is means that. Even though it says aux, you hit that once and you hit it twice, that's two. Then you've got the outputs. There are two RCA outputs. These are world's best cables, which I have to link because they sent them to me and I love them. Um, you got two sets of outputs for RCA. So you could hook up to this amp and this amp. Just put them both hooked up, whatever you want to do. You can't switch between them. It's just going to output all the time, just like the headphone out. But you get two of them. Then you have balanced outputs left and right. So you can hook these up to power amps that are balanced. These aren't. Are those Bs? Better not be a B. Then you have your balanced input, which here we have going to the D70. Then you've got um, Rotel Link. Don't know what that does. If you have more Rotel equipment, I'll probably turn it on. Um, external remote in, 12 volt triggers out. You got a control, a computer IO, which is a D sub 12. One, two, three, four, five. 
a nine, a D sub nine serial port. And then this is your digital input panel. Two coaxial digital inputs, two fiber optic inputs, one of which I'm using, and your PC USB. And there's your power plug. And again, I can't overstate and understate how nice, this is one that's not plugged in. Look at this fucking beast mode. I just want to sell more of these fucking power cords. These are the hotel, the hospital grade, hotel grade. They're like for hospital beds, but Monoprice sells them on Amazon. This is a beast. This fuck those big silver bastards. That's the 15 foot cable you want. Anyway, so you get fuck loads of inputs and then fuck loads of outputs and then some digital and power and you're good to go. That's all this job, this is this job. It wants, it's to give you a remote control. If you have your living room set up, see us, I got a TV in the living room. I don't want surround sound. I just want two nice speakers and I got power amps or two nice speakers because I've got self-powered speakers. I just need to control the volume. Up until this moment, the easiest way to do this has been to get a DAC that has a remote control. I will link in the description the Topping E30. Because the Topping E30, I should bring it over, it's a little tiny box. You have digital inputs only, USB, uh, fiber optic, cost digital, and you got two RCA outs only, and you got a remote control that goes up and down, and that's your job, that's his job. But, so that's this, the only thing, difference is that this is a preamp, officially a preamp, because it has analog inputs. None of those DACs I tell you to use will take a, a phono preamp or a fucking game console. Most of those things help with digitally now. So really, the need for how many are here? Uh, let's see. That's an that's an analog input. So that's one, two, three, four, five, six, six full sets of analog inputs, and switch them around. I. I like you'd have to have literally a stack, like an old mini disc player, a fucking laser disc player, your old CD player, if you wanted to use another DAC or the DAC and the CD player, because you get two opticals and two coaxial digitals, which is more important for modern stuff, game consoles or computers, or you can plug the PC in with the USB. And then you have the Bluetooth again in the front. Which I'm glad to say that the actual remote control here, the play, pause, uh, next track should work too. All work. Mute that for a second. Um, so yeah, that's that's nice. It's a nice little feature. It's a nice little feature. I wonder if it'll work with the USB. I didn't try it. But this thing's job is basically just that. Take a bunch of shit in, control the volume, spit it out into whatever format you need, and then go home and turn off at night. And it does an exceptional job of that. It has to, one of the reasons you would look at if you're an audiophile, a more expensive preamp is because your signal coming from wherever it's coming from, whether it's coming from a digital input or a good analog input is going into this and it has to be re-amplified. See, so in order to control the volume, you gotta take a voltage in and then go, okay, that's fixed. I'm not fuck, fucking with that. I'm gonna copy that here and then make it go up and down. So you need to do that good. You need to do that well. You need to do that with finesse and accuracy so that you don't take the good sound coming from a DAC or coming from a source and turn it into a bunch of garbled fucking analog bullshit because it's just a piece of shit, which is why these things cost six, $700. Now, I would love to see shit put out one that does like three analog inputs and two digital inputs and you just plop it down in a little shit case and give me a little remote. Well, shit's remotes are garbage. You'd have to get a new remote shit. But that sort of thing should happen because if you have a living room and you have multiple things you want to plug into it to control it and you don't want a surround receiver for the reasons that surround receivers, that's an old one that doesn't count, but modern surround receivers, while they have all these inputs, usually don't have coax, you know, XLR ins and XLR outs and the mechanisms to switch and the mechanisms to reamplify are not exactly audiophile peak. They're just whatever. Fucking shove it in a, a Denon or a Marantz or an Onkyo or Yamaha, whatever. Just get it. It does a thing. Like that receiver, that old Pioneer from the 90s, which is older than this, is literally two units. It is an excellent pre-amplifier like this and then an amplifier. And you actually have to put pins in it to make them connect. 
So basically the pins in this are the world's best cables going to the amplifiers, and the amplifiers go to the speakers. So are there, it's very good, sounds great. The DAC, actually, once I figured out that the top it needed to get lower to three decibels, because that was the owner's request, was, can you tell me if the DAC in this, because I'm sending fiber opt again, I got a bunch of switch, the fucking floors, goddamn nightmare disaster. But the actual DAC in it is decent. I still hear a bit better going when I switch this to XLR, because I can do XLR, and that's the computer playing Pink Floyd, or hit optical, and that's the computer playing Pink Floyd. So that's two different sources playing the exact same source. Oh, I turned it off. I think we're gonna talk about another problem. I guess I forced myself into that. Um, I was trying to listen with headphones, I have to unplug everything, but on speakers, on very good speakers, there's just the smallest like width change. Because I mean, it's a $600 unit right now, $1,000 unit. The DAC, the DAC obviously has a purpose. It's got USB, it's got, it's, it's a big portion of this. They didn't go super cheap on it. I have no idea what chipset they're using. If it's AKM, it might be even worth, you know, it's a fortune because it's, you know, they can't get those anymore. It's not like required, it isn't a piece of shit. I, I, there were, the concern was that the DAC would just be, yeah, they threw it in there and it's a $100 fucking, what am I saying? It would be a $22 DAC chip with bad implementation, and then you'd be able to absolutely tell apart from like a high-end topping. Can I tell the difference between the two? If I'm really paying attention, if I turn my back and someone came over here and switched between XLR and optical, and I went from that DAC to the internal DAC, I really wouldn't know. I have to be sitting there staring dead straight at Ray and going, okay, you or you. So it's a toss up. I would skip trying to use a big ass DAC. If you just want to plug your computer into this, it's fine. We got to talk about something that came in the box. I'll um, get this out of the way. It's the biggest and mainest flaw of the whole fucking unit. The unit's off right now. I hit the power button by mistake on the remote. It's off, there's nothing lit here. There's nothing lit. There's nothing, oh wait. Hmm. Okay, there it goes, it's off. Here's the thing. If you turn off the unit with the power button, there's no problem. You turn on the unit, a, a blindingly bright blue motherfucker turns on. It's a blue motherfucker. It's not even a light, it's a, it's a motherfucker. It's what that, that's called. It's a great song. Another great song. I'm probably gonna review these speakers on this exact setup with this here. Um, in fact, I'm gonna switch to the XLR because tone bypass. The, the box this unit came in had a very interesting thing. I didn't take it out of the closet to show you because I'm just gonna describe it to you. It was the instruction manual. It was a normal standard shit. Here's your, here's your warranty card. Here's a, and here is a little ring sticker. It's a sticker. It's a little, little sticker. And it, it came with a piece of paper and it said, hey, um, if you want, you can put it over the power LED. And I'm like, what, what, why? And then I unboxed the unit and I turned it on. And I'm like, oh, well that's fucking bright. But wait, all these units have dimmer functions. So here's dim. So you see it's dimmer, dim, dim. Oh good, it dim that down to about half the brightness. Huh, what happens when I power it off, soft off? That blinks and then stays on. So even though it's off and everything's a little, and you heard it go click, click, that indicates that the 110 main power bus switch is still turned on. So that's on all the fucking time. And let me tell you, walking around my basement, like watching movies, I had this plugged in, and I'm like, all right, I'm done using it, power off. I think they got a couple complaints, because you don't just make the sticker to cover that. You fucked up. Rotel fucked up in their implementation. That should be on only when the unit is on, and when it goes to standby, there should be some other thing or this should go real dim. And then when you use the dimmer function, that's the fucked up part. That doesn't even dim. That's twice, 10 times as bright as the screen could ever be. If you illuminated like one, if you put a wall here and illuminated a room with this side and a room with that side, this side you could read and live and fucking raise a family. This side is like, I, I can see light. So ha 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 ha. And then the weird thing is around the power knob, there's a very light blue ring. Do you see it? I don't know if they were going to make that an LED ring or if they just did that for some sort of weird matching or that's part of like the Alps pot or whatever fucks in there. 
because it is a digital knob, so it's probably not an Alps pot. But um, that's fucked. That's a fucked feature. Just straight off the bat, I'm just going to give you that. Let's move on to the other fucked things about this unit. The remote. It's definitely not a remote specifically for this unit. It has a lot of buttons that are dedicated. All these buttons at the bottom, all 12 of these, are all coaxial 1, 2, optical 1, 2, auxiliary 1, 2, PC, USB tuner. All these things are the inputs. Then you get speaker A and speaker B. They don't do shit on this unit. There is no speaker A and speaker B. You get repeat, which would only matter if you had like a CD player with repeat function. At least the stop, play, pause, next buttons will work with Bluetooth, possibly with USB, not sure. But those are also probably for some sort of other units that Rotel uses, they're just repeating the remote. Then you get to the one through zero numpad with the plus 10. Again, CD track change thing, useless on this unit. Then you come to the up, down, left, right, enter, bypass menu, dim and exit. There is a menu in this, we'll go through it real quick. The dim button obviously does the dimming, and the bypass button bypasses the bass, treble, and balance, which you can actually actuate the bass, treble, and balance on this, if you want to mess with tone controls. Then up here you get mute, off, the biggest fucking on button I've ever seen in bright red, it's like emergency power on. And then these two little fucking me measly shit buttons are the volume control. Why? One of the reasons... It's a fucking preamp. Its sole purpose in life is to turn on, pick a source, and then control the volume. It's his job, control the volume. Volume control, it's volume control. Volume control, big ass knob, volume control. So why is turn on, big ass button, and then pick a thing is down here, so we're gonna XLR, boom, and then your volume control is like these little, like, that's not even a comfortable place to hold the remote. I've always said when you pick up a remote control, if your fucking thumb doesn't land immediately on the volume, hey, look at this. Vizio got it right. It's on the left. It's where my thumb rests. It's in the comfortable part of my hand. Perfect. And, you know, Songkaz gets it right. They put the volume buttons right there too. This, you pick this up and it's like, it's not even like you could use these, which are nice, big. Up. This is like, oh, in case you want to change the volume. We're not going to... You're not gonna insult you by put like this should have been just too big fucking click click click. Put a win could put a car window switch there from like a 90s Mercedes. Like drr, drr, drr. make that the volume slider button. Just something other than those little shits, which by the way, I still have the plastic on this. I'm gonna leave it on there so the owner can uh remove that himself. Uh yeah. Okay, good. Yeah, that's the the main problem with the remote is that shit's way too spread out from the things you actually need to use possibly these things nothing here because you're never really using the, the the menu and these and then your fucking volume is this fucking pitiful goddamn thing um menu i'm gonna hit the menu button so tone bypass on off off or on tone bypass is just bass and treble Bass and treble, you want to control bass and treble, and you don't want to have the tone bypass off. You want to have tone bypass off to control bass and treble, and tone bypass on to be direct mode. It's very stupid. It's clicking away, by the way, and I have no idea why. So that's one. Next balance, next dimmer, Rotel's link RCD, RCD equals CD. Power on max volume, that's a nice feature. It means you could set it if you know what your volume is happiest at. You could have a turn on to that volume. Auto power off time equals disable. Because I'm doing review, I'm running it down here for hours at a time. You can set it to auto power off, it doesn't detect anything. Um, auxiliary one volume equals variable. Um, coaxial one volume equals variable. Coaxial two volume equals variable. Coaxial optical and optical two and PC USB and Bluetooth. So you can actually fix the volume for any source for whatever reason that we have a, um, either you have a preamp going into it that you're controlling the volume there, or the thing you're plugging into is like a powered set of speakers that has its own volume control. You can make those so that it just locks out the volume so this doesn't work for any of those, which is kind of nice. 
I mean, I don't know of any particular case I'd need that. I would have to have literally like a set of edifiers or swans with their own volume, then I wouldn't be using this. Um, so tone, balance, dimmer, rotel, power on, auto disable, volume, coaxial, coaxial, optical, USB, Bluetooth. Then PC audio class 1 or 2.0 for when you plug it in. And then it tells me the main and USB firmwares, factory default, yes or no, the end. That is the whole tour of the menu. Not complicated. Some nice little touches in there. It's not exactly like a 2021, get your app out, load your app on your phone so you can control you. It doesn't do that. It doesn't do that. It doesn't have to do that. Most people wouldn't need that. It'd be nice. A, a modern one of these for five to $600 that you have literally an app that you could tell it to load your Spotify. That's called a streaming device. And those things are expensive as fuck. Just saying if you want to put one up. By the way, you can access the menu and the plus minus and enter here to go through all that stuff. You would do that, and then you'd hit enter, and then you'd adjust the bass down and up. Oh, God. Uh, okay. Exit. Escape. Where's escape? Where's exit? Exit. There's no exit there. There's enter there. So, I think I've talked about everything. It's a big, heavy unit. It actually has weight to it. Because... A, it's a Rotel, and it's just always going to be fucking heavy. B, there is actually a power supply in here. It's doing signal work. It's doing heavy signal work. It's taking signals, trying to keep them clean, moving from one place to the other, adjusting volumes. Um, I would have opened it up, but... You know what? Hold on. I'm pulling up slack. I want a girl with a short skirt and a long... It's my first time opening this up, by the way. Don't explode. Come on. <sighs> Jacket. That is a thick, meaty lid. So let's look at the inside of a Rotel and try not to get too many shadows in there. Tordial Transformer, custom uh, designed and manufactured by Rotel. We've got a cover here over some stuff. I ain't gonna. There is live 110 coming into this. So I'm not gonna get too close to it or spit into it if I could avoid it. But look at those big chunky like things. Everything's chunky. Look at this stuff hanging off the board. That's so handmade 70s amplifier. Like, let me, hold on, I'm actually gonna take the head, camera off my head and just give you the tour on the inside. Like, look at this stuff. Some of these stuff doesn't even like resemble modern day equipment. Like that looks fine. But a lot of the stuff looks like it's hand placed and not even, Big chunky spaces. Nothing looks like it was put on a part picker and put together. This is this is legit, legit stuff. And your covers and your rotel things. So it's got things inside. It's not just a piece of like. It's not just a circuit board with an IEC that goes switch switch switch. It's doing actual work. We've got some fuses here. I know what a fuse looks like. I'm an electrical engineer. Um, here is, what is that? Is that the DAC board? I can't tell. Uh, Fion. I'm trying to read if there's any, any names I recognize. Oh, that says AKM right there. So I guess that proves that they're using an AK, at least an AKM chip, if that's not the DAC itself. But this is where the digital inputs all come in, is down here. Up here are the switches. Looks like there's another output for another board that isn't in this unit. Yeah, it's beautiful here. It's 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 all this is all hand placed and done. I just they just didn't put them down to the board. They're probably too wide to fit between some of those contacts. All of them with a the little heat shrink on them. This is it's why you're buying this. This was a is it American made? You know, I don't actually oh, I'm plugging that. We're done listening to cake short skirt and a long oh jacket. Probably shouldn't. One of the dangers of unplugging uh, power amps is they're currently amplifying whatever happens. So if it goes, then it's that's what it's going to amplify. It's going to amplify that straight to your face. Out, out. Take out the fiber. I'm going to actually look at it in the back. So yeah, oh, they have these beautiful big eject ports here. You know, it's a it's a piece of machinery. What does it say it's made? I'm looking for that. Made by Rotel in China. 
Okay, so the Chinese children put that together. But they did a decent job of it. You know, you look at um, the, the Macintosh stuff, it's all made in New York, and it's just like, yeah, but it ain't built too well. Or it's built well enough. But this, this is nice. So yeah, I think I've shown you the inside. It was only six screws to take this apart. Pretty heavy duty chassis, actually. Nice covered relay for this fucking blue LED. Can you actually get to that LED to remove it? I don't even see... No, there's a whole other board behind here that you'd have to fucking molest to get that in, into that. But yeah, no, there's your Rotel. There's your review. There's your Ray Ayanami wallpaper in front of the moon. See the bright moon behind her? That's why I picked it, because the blue, the bright blue moon, fucking, mm. I wish they made more things like this, modernize it a little bit, compact it a little bit for desk use, because I'm sure people would like to use it for their game consoles. Give us 50, 70% of it should be digital inputs, whether they're multiple, like, even the goddamn Sonkaz over there, the Sonkaz SGD1, that DAC, it's a preamp. You can actually control and adjust volume. And it has multiple inputs. None of them are analog. I don't think any of those are analog. Are there any? There's, there's like one DAC in the whole fucking world that has a single analog input. And then everything else is digital. But that does the same job as this, only that has no analog inputs. But it also has two USBs, just like this does, for two different computers. You can go computer and computer, or computer and laptop, and then you can switch between it. So there, there's options without getting an actual dedicated preamp. I just wish there was a dedicated preamp for the, the modern world. Maybe some II-S for some, some DAC inputting, and then, you know, just keep it simple with three analog inputs. You don't need more than three. And uh, make the remote not a pile of shit. And give me an app. As much as I don't like apps, it's 2021. Got a nice phone. Give me a fucking app. Let me tune in things and send things to it and be done with it. And uh, yeah, so that's it. That's the end of this review. It's been sitting around for a while. I wanted to make sure I got it done. And uh, now I'm going to put this back together. And then I'm going to start my intensive listening process of these Bucart A4, no, S400 Mark IIs. I think they're 2200 They're more money than the Mark 1s, which I have on the shelf in the exact same color. So that's going to be a good comparison. I'm going to have to pull those out. But um, yeah, thank you for stopping by. My name is Zeos Pantera. That wallpaper available in the description. Link to this on eBay. There's one on eBay with like $55 shipping. Probably worth it if you're looking for a solid, uh, I would say old school, but like moderately modern-ish preamp for doing your audiophile thingy my bobs whatever you do with your bobs your, your vintage rants bobs bobs rotel bobs um links to everything i talked about in the video the headphones the wires the fucking dax everything's in the description uh this channel um if you would like to support it and you'd like to see these videos early five dollars on patreon or subscribe star lets you see reviews early they also let you participate in yard sales. Had I gotten this, so actually, since I have two per now, the grade doesn't probably whatever. Since I get things from companies and I, I buy things and people send me things, when they like just do whatever, and if I want to sell them to get them the fuck out of my house, so I don't have piles of guided piles of speakers, you can look for them on the yard sales on the first to the tenth of every month. So five all patrons get to see reviews early, participate in yard sales, and sound demos, which usually were on this channel and now are on a separate side channel, which is linked somewhere in the description. Um, if you are missing any of those sound demos that got ghosted during the purge of 2021, you can find them there. Also, all sound demos in lossless format are uploaded to that channel. So any modern sound demos in the last two, two, two three months will be there in a lossless flack. So you can get access to those. All wallpapers in a giant archive in case you just want better, easier than going through every video and clicking download. Original artists can be found on SauceNow or IQDB. Although that might be a screenshot from the show. Not 100% sure on that. Looks too good to be a screenshot. Um, but yeah, and then the $10 a month uh, supporters get into a private behind the scenes telegram chat where you can actually ask me questions. I can't read every question that comes to me in the comments or it's posted on Reddit or sent to me in private messages on Patreon or Subscribestar. Even if I love you, I just can't. I, my, that's like an entire 50 hour work week just to look at the questions and not even answer them all. 
But if you'd like to ask me directly, you have to climb the paywall of $10 a month and get into this little room, and that room has 200 and some odd people in it, and they're all very helpful, and I'm helpful, and you add Zeos and I'll answer any questions you have. Like, hey, Zeos, what's the dimensions of this? Or Zeos, I have this and this and this. What do you recommend? And I'll answer you with my voice. It's fantastic. But don't answer me with your voice, because that's weird. I'm mean, like, you're near my house. Get out of my house. Um, yes. That, that, that. Hi-Fi Guides and the Hi-Fi Guides Forum, if you want an audio forum that is started by me and DMS and we try to keep as much shit out of it from, from going down as possible, there you go. HiFiGuides.com and the form attached and we're done here. Thank God. I thought this was going to be a very short review because it's like it's a preamp, but I realize I've never done a preamp and I've never done a Rotel preamp and I've never done a Rotel product and it's got some weird fucking ugly remote so that's going to take up all my time and then I'll probably rip it apart.